Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. Today is mail call. Just a quick video today. Just a quick mail call. I um, I've ordered a bunch of stuff lately uh, at Amazon, but mostly at AliExpress. They were having a sale, and I got lots of stuff. Uh, it hasn't all arrived. Most of it's still to come, but there's a few things that have arrived, and I thought I might just get them done now because there's going to be more coming. So it might just be mail call around here for the rest of the month. Uh, the other thing that I'm trying to get around to is the debugging of the uh, software for the uh, first silicon chip mini project, the symbol keyboard. Uh, I've got my friend, the secret engineer, who's been talking to me on YouTube um, at, with some good ideas that I'm going to follow up on soon. So uh, stick around for that. Uh, we did talk about doing a live stream, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do uh, just these recorded videos. Uh, live stream is difficult f for a bunch of reasons. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that will be coming up. But today and, and soon there's going to be more mail calls, but uh, I thought I might just get these ones today. It looks like a couple of things from Amazon um, and uh, something from China and then something else from America. Oh, and uh, uh, a book. Oh, yeah, it's there. I'll show you that as well at the end. So uh, let's jump over to the bench and see what we've got. Here we are on the bench. So I, uh, I suppose we might as well start with our loot from Amazon. This, the Forest Mems Engineer's Notebook. I, uh, I did order a bunch of books from, uh, uh, from uh, Amazon just recently, including a bunch of stuff from For Forest Mems. So, uh, so this is it. Check it out. If you haven't heard of Forest M. Mems III, he's a prolific author from back in the good old days. He's been around for a long, long time. I'm not sure when he wrote this book. Copyright 1992. 1986, 1982, and 1979. I grew up with this guy. As you can see, he started writing just before I was born, and then he followed through all the way into the 90s. So yeah, I got this stuff because I was feeling nostalgic. So uh, yeah, pretty pleased to have this one. Might uh, might do that in the old book teardown sometimes. So, yes, very happy to have this. And I've got more coming that are related. It's similar. So looking forward to that. This might be another one. I'm not sure what we've got here. It's another package from Amazon. Ah, uh, yes. Now, this is the second edition of Charles Petzold Code. Now, this is a software book. It's not an electronics book. Um, and it's written by Charles Petzold, who's a famous author who did a lot of stuff for Microsoft technology back in the day. So, um, yeah, very famous author from America. Wrote this cool book called Code. Now, I've got the first edition sitting on my shelf. This is the, uh, the original uh, first edition. And I heard, and I forget where, that the second edition was much improved. Um, I don't remember where I heard that. Uh, it might not be true, but I, I, I believed it, and I got myself a copy of the second edition. I never got around to reading the first edition, so I thought, well, if I'm going to read it, I'll read the second edition, which is the new and improved edition. So, uh, yes, looking forward to that. Although I probably won't cover that on the channel because it's software, not electronics. And this is my third package from Amazon. Uh, yes. So, uh, yeah, the story behind this is, is, is kind of a happy one. I, uh, I was just flipping through. I was doing some documentation for the show, and I'm trying to keep my equipment um, details up to date. So, um, I've got a record of all the things that I own. And I was going through my old records and I found that I bought these Sony headphones like in December last year and they just never turned up. So like 10, 10 months after the fact, I went to Amazon and I said, hey, my stuff never showed up. And they said, no problem. We'll send you a new lot. 
So this is the new lot that they were going to send me. So I, I just got some new headphones from Sony. Thanks very much. Um, I'll get some actually really good headphones sooner or later. But at the moment, I'm just scraping by with what I can afford. Now, what are we going to do next? I suppose next we can do our bag of stuff from China. So, uh... Alright. I should have opened this up in advance. Anyway, not exactly sure what we're dealing with here. Let's figure it out. So I'm just going to cut this one open. Ah, uh, yes. So it looks like I've got some USB cables arrive. I have to say, if you want to buy USB cables, uh, in my experience recently, um, AliExpress is the way to do it. Uh, I, uh, I didn't have good experience buying uh, USB cables from Amazon recently. Uh, the cables that arrived were just USB 2 cables, and I really wasn't expecting that for the money. So uh, that was disappointing. Hopefully these, hopefully I don't have a disappointing experience with the cables from uh, China. I guess we'll find out. Um, but that's all these are. What have we got? So this is uh, just USB-C. Looks like maybe two or three meters. It says it can do 8K, 20 gigabits per second, USB 3.2. Similarly for these ones, so it's just a bunch of USB-C cables here. Um, they're specced, they're specced at 8K, 20 gigabits per second. So hopefully um, that's actually the truth and not lies. Um, and I guess we'll eventually find out. I recently uh, reorganized my USB cables drawer. Um, and I actually took all of the USB-C cables out in advance of these things arriving. So I've got a whole other drawer for USB-C now. It's just more USB-C. Those are USB uh, type A to type C. I got a mix of them. Um, I got these in advance of some new 4K cameras that I'm planning to get. I haven't got the cameras yet, um, but I can't bring myself to spend the money on those just at the moment. So that's a, a, a to-do. Anyway, there's a great big uh, uh, USB A to USB-C and two smaller ones of the same and then again a big one USB-C and two smaller ones of the same. Uh, these ones uh, aren't branded uh, with the same branding as these ones which claim to be uh, 20 gigabits per second at 8K USB 3.2 but I think they will mark similarly um, so that's good. Anyway, I guess we'll find out when we have some uh, some more experience. And uh, I'll put the one there that's got my actual name not crossed out. So, two more things to show you. Now, this arrived from America, and I have to say, I'm pretty pleased to be receiving it. It's the uh, it's the fluke. I got myself my first fluke meter. It cost me uh, 222 Australian dollar reduce. And it seems to be branded in. It's either Chinese or Japanese. I'm going to go Japanese. But I'm not an expert. 
in uh, such things. I'm not sure. That's knee, isn't it? Is that hiragana in there? I think maybe. That looks maybe katakana or is that na? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm going to guess Japanese, but uh, not an expert. And it's my fluke. It's a fluke. Uh, of course, the real meters that I want to get are the ones from the EV blog. There's four of those to get, and I'm planning to get the full set. But I was watching uh, a really cool video from this dude, young guy, really knowledgeable about power electronics. And I saw him using his fluke meter and I thought, that's interesting. So I went searching for the 117B+. And it's just a basic, basic, good, honest multimeter. It does voltage and ohms and stuff like that. I don't think it's got capacitance. Oh, no, it does have capacitance. Yeah, so it's just a good, honest, basic multimeter from Fluke, 222 bucks. I thought that's that's a good thing to have, so I got it, and this is it. I might actually do the unboxing of this separately, so uh, yeah, st stand by for that. We'll do the unboxing uh, together, uh, maybe straight away. I might just do that after this video. And then the last thing to tell you, this arrived from Make Magazine uh, today. And uh, it's Forrest Mims again, who I was telling you about earlier. And he's got this book called Science Experiments, DIY Projects from the Pages of Make. And speaking of Make, in the thing, they gave me this. It says, here be makers. Here there be makers. Which is usually, here there be dragons, right? And it's, br it's branded Maker Fair. And I thought this thing was going to be really cool and flash. It's it's uh, it's got some PCBWay branding on the back, um, and it's from uh, Electrify it, Electrify it, which is kind of cool. And it's got a little switch here, and it's got housing for a cell battery in the back, uh, which seems to go over to here and here. So I think it's uh, actually a case of um, BYO um, LED. So I think what I'm going to do is get an LED with long enough things and I'm going to put the LED there and bend the legs back over to here and here and use the screw terminals to wire in that battery and I should be able to turn that on and find out what this circuit does. It might just be a power switch and it just turns the light on. Um, but I'll take that. <laughs> That'd be great. So... Uh, yeah, stick around. We'll do that together now. Why wouldn't we do that now? And I, I, as I said, I, I got the Make uh, Forest Min Science Experiments. So, um, science, science experiments and projects. Scientist, scientific discoveries aren't made only by professionals. Amateur and citizen scientists have made many discoveries that working scientists use. In fact, many institutions, including NASA, rely on the work and discoveries of amateurs. Amateur scientists have discovered significant dinosaur fossils, found new species of plants, and identified new comets and asteroids. Their discoveries have been published in scientific, scientific journals and books. Written by the foremost amateur scientist in the US today, Forrest Mims Science Experiments covers many ways you can enter the world of amateur science. You'll learn the essential skills, methods, and procedures that you need to begin working, thinking, inquiring, and recording like a real scientist. With this book, you'll learn how to study tree rings, investigate the different things that snow can do, modify and mount temperature sensors, sense and record movement as well with an optical fiber seismometer, construct automatic sunshine recorders, use and calibrate your own essential tool, the infrared thermometer, capture and study airborne particles with your own air sampler, track the most important greenhouse gas, build a twilight photometer that can measure to the top of the stratosphere, Extract scientific data from digital images and make music from the data. Use this digital scanner to assist with essential scientific inquiries. Mine data to most efficiently glean online info. Properly record your scientific inquiries and discoveries. Organize your own space-themed Mars bot competition. Photograph the, photograph the solar aureole. I don't know what that is which you can't see with your bare eyes. 
use LEDs to detect light and track nighttime projectiles. Uh, you'll even learn fun facts about Thomas Jefferson, the first maker president, how the PC revolution took off, and what to do when things fail, because they will. <laughs> Failure is part of learning and part of making, but there's no time to worry about that. You have so much to learn, explore, analyze, discover, and make. Author Forrest M. Mims III, an amateur scientist and Rolex Award winner, is the most widely read electronics author in the world and was named one of the 50 best brains in science by Discover Magazine. His 60 books have sold over 7.5 million copies and have twice been honoured for excellence by the Computer Press Association. Good work, Forrest. So I'm looking forward to checking out his book uh, about science experiments. We might have a look at that together. Uh, in the future, we'll see. So I've got a fluke uh, multimeter to unbox with you later on, but uh, let's have a look at this and see what we can do. What colour will we use? How about we go with amber? I wonder if the leads are long enough. They're not quite long enough. I wonder if I, oh, and it won't fit in there either. What I really need is a smaller LED with longer legs. Here are my three millimeter LEDs. I don't think I've got an amber one. I've got red and green and yellow. What do we reckon? I'm a bit partial to blue because blue was so difficult to achieve, wasn't it? It'll fit there, but the legs aren't long enough. Be good if I had one that was just a little bit bigger. I don't know. What about, uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to do better than these uh, three millimeter LEDs here. And I'm not sure what color. I don't know what color that is. Let's go red. Red? It is a red thing. Hmm. And we're going to have to figure out how to um, how to put it all together. <sighs> So, we're going to want to put that, uh, we're going to be doing soldering, so let's get the, let's get the iron on while we're thinking about everything. That should come on in a minute. Now, we're going to want some glue as well, aren't we? Dear me, I've got some hot glue here. My actual good hot glue gun's on the other bench, but uh, I've got this flimsy little guy here, uh, which is pretty handy in a tight spot. So let's use that guy. He'll take a little while to heat up. And we're just going to um, hot glue our LED in place. Uh, I think we're just going to go with red. And uh, we've got to, um, oh, I suppose we should test the polarity of the thing. Dear me, this is all becoming a bit of a chore. Uh, I've got a red alligator clip and a black alligator clip. And I suppose I'm going to need a cell battery. So let me go and grab one of those. Here's one. It's a CR2032. I think it'll work. And it's labeled here positive on the on this side. So this ought to be the correct polarity. Uh, and then this says negative. So if that's true, 
then this will be the right one for this side and this will be the right one for that side and the short lead on an LED is negative and the long lead is positive and there we are baby it works we can turn him on and we can turn him off so what we need to do now is attach the uh, the wires now there are screw terminals there's a hole at the top there I was thinking it could go in there but it looks like maybe I don't know how are we gonna do this should we mount it on the front or should we mount it with the LED coming through the bottom there I don't know I just don't know now let's just get the uh, the polarity right okay well I've got some blue tack so let's uh, let's do that let's take the blue tack here and stick this guy now we want to put him so that the legs are the right way around and then we'll just put it with just enough going through and then we'll hot glue him into place I don't want it to stick out too much but we want it to stick out a little bit <laughs> dear me I can smell all of the equipment starting to get warm so let's glue this thing in first and then we'll solder him in later although I'm not sure that that's really the best thing to do hard to say and the screw terminals seem to be on the front and we're going in on the back so we'll see if we can get the wiring done we'll see we'll find out so let's put him in bit of glue all right well that's a bit of glue now we're going to need some more uh, some more wire to get from there to there and there to there I've got all sorts of bits and pieces. It's not what we want. Hmm hmm hmm. We don't need the wire to go far. <clears throat> See if I can get this bit of wire out of its Thing. This is just an old twist tie here. I, I reckon that'll do us. If I can get the wire off, yep, yeah, it comes off. Mm. <sighs> I'm just going to get out the uh, pliers on this guy and pull this off here we go there we go all right so we got a bit of wire here and we just need it to go let's say around around there and up there and same again around here and up there uh, and hopefully that'll do us so let's cut this thing in half 
this is it here that's roughly half snip my hot glue gun is uh, is dribbling it's alright we can leave that for a bit I think it's glued on well enough so let's round this around and on there might as well try soldering that on I've got some solder somewhere don't I? come on where's my solder? what have I done with it? maybe I used it all here's some more solder oh there's solder over there anyway this will do so uh, what will we do first let's try and get that on there it's probably going to need a lot of heat maybe I'll try and get that part together first seem to work and uh, let's just try bringing this around a bit there we go nice and tight on there and let's see if we can uh, get enough heat on this to solder it in there and uh, we have to pray I didn't make a mistake with the polarity although I suppose if I did I can just put the battery in the other way around so I'm just letting this heat ride up and hopefully that'll be enough to stick it to the, uh, the thing although it's probably a pretty big heat sink this thing it's you know what might be good is some flux I've got some flux here, so let's uh, let's try that. And let's see what happens when we heat it up. Yeah, I'm not real sure how much success I've had there. But we don't need to be perfect. We just need to conduct a little bit of electricity. So let's put the other side in and see how we've gone. This is the other bit here. And again, we'll just... Uh, swing it around oh, gee that's real hot I just burnt my finger pressing that dear me so I'll uh, try not to burn my finger again and this looks about right that up there. Let's see if I can get that bit on. Oh, that battery's switched on, isn't that funny? At least we know I got the polarity right. Oop, have I overheated the thing? What have I done? Oh no, it's just over here. Yeah. It's gonna um, get that with a bit more flux. But it looks like we've got a solid joint because it's solid on, isn't it? Awesome. 
Man, that thing is still red hot. It's burning my finger. Looks good to me and the, the LED says on, doesn't it? So that's working. Seems to be robust enough. That light isn't turning off. And if we take our thing off, there we go. Here there be makers. Awesome. It's bright, isn't it? And off it goes, and on it goes. Feeling like a genuine, bona fide maker. <sighs> anyway, that was just a little random digression. I, I hadn't planned that, but there we go. So we've got our Here There Be Makers, Maker Fair bling all happening. Thank you, PCBWay. Um, this came in the, in the mail from Maker Shed in, in California uh, this morning. Um, so uh, yeah that was pretty cool to find that in the mail and uh, yeah that that brings this uh, this mail call to an end I suppose I'll, I'll flip over to the uh, to the welcome cam and say goodbye and that's a wrap so uh, this is our uh, uh, here there be makers bling which arrived from maker shed today which we just put our LED in so that's pretty cool I'll keep that on the bench and uh, we'll do the uh, the unboxing of my new fluke meter soon and I'll remember to put a link in the show notes to the the fellow who I saw uh, have one so I uh, he had some really interesting stuff about power electronics which was was really interesting so uh yeah i'll, I'll link you over to that um gonna check out my new sony headphones i'm uh, gonna read my new book of code from child Petzold, second edition got my forest mims book that's pretty cool a couple of those actually two here um and that's that's about everything isn't it so uh Thanks very much for watching uh, and please remember to hit like and subscribe.